Welcome back to our talk or lesson or teaching on the second epistle of John. As we've gone into the first verse, the elect unto the elect, the elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. And I'm going to say again that this lesson is for the beginner and for the advanced, those who are milk and those who are in meat. I'm in no rush. This could take 500 recordings. And I hope that the Holy Spirit will work in your heart to learn and to know what the scriptures say. Second John has a lot of meat in it. Second John opens up a lot of doctrine, a lot of teaching, a lot of stuff that we can use in this tiny one chapter book of 13 verses. We can use this to go far and wide. And I hope it's not boring. I hope you can learn and I hope you enjoy it. You need to go back and follow the others. Lessons that we've done so far as we continue our lesson on elect. It says the elder unto the elect lady. We've been discussing elect. We looked at last week. Uh, just go back and you need to go back and do it. We looked at the church. Before that we looked at the Jews in the election. Uh, it's always based upon foreknowledge of God. You need to go back to the to the previous audios. You need to go back to the previous videos that are on YouTube and SermonNet. And on the SermonNet, I believe I put a link here that you can get the copy of this book on the video. Or if it doesn't work on SermonNet, you send me your address, your email address. Request a copy. And we'll through Staples get this copy to you at the cost and shipping. So in other words, what it costs for Staples to do this book and to ship it to your address. You can have a copy of this book. Now there's only one thing. Staples, I'm, I want to hurry up get back in this lesson. Staples has made, with my copy, has made a boo-boo. A lot of spaces have been o omitted. So there's words that are like 36 words together or two words together. It makes it a little hard to read, but you know what? Only God's perfect. So you can have a copy of this if it's downloaded through SermonNet or if you want to pay Staples to make a copy of this and to ship it to your address, there will be information at the end on how to do it. But let's get into the elect. Now, we left off with John 3.16. If you want to study election and Calvinism and how John 3.16 refutes Calvinism, last week's lesson, you need to, all of them you need to do. But we're going to look at this week, chosen. That's another word that is associated with elect, chosen. Now, if you take your Bible to four, uh, Isaiah 42.1, King James Bible. If you use any other Bible, if you're wrong. I'm sorry. When that's not what we're studying now, but only the King James Bible is the Word of God and will be the Word of God for all eternity. You say, will there be a King James Bible in, in New Jerusalem? I believe there will be. Isaiah 42, 1. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him, and he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Lord Jesus Christ is my elect. He's chosen. As we read in that verse. Now this is the only particular exception. Because usually chosen and elect is a corporation, a body. Outside the Lord Jesus Christ it's never an individual. For John 3.16, For God so loved the world, and those that come out of the world and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, they can be elected, they can be the chosen. The church is chosen. The body of Christ, all the Jew and Gentiles are saved together into one group. Uh... Isaiah 45 4, number 2. Isaiah 45 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, 
And Israel, my elect, I have called thee by thy name. I have summoned thee, though thou hast not known me. Now here is Israel, the nation, the corporate nation, the entire group of people under Isaac, Jacob, I mean, Isaac, J Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as a nation, are elect, are chosen by God. Now, let's go to 1 John 1 again, that we were at. You're going to say, well, look at here. 1 John 1, the elect, the elder unto the elect lady and her children. We say, well, there's a lady. There's, she's singular. Yes, she's singular, but she's also the body of Christ. She's in the body of Christ. She's saved. She's not this one woman who's going to stand out above all Christians. She's a born-again Christian. She's saved, so she's part of the body of Christ. If you are a woman... And listening to this, and you are born again, you are saved, you are an elect lady. And you can read Second John to yourself as almost as John writing to you. The Bible speaks of us as uh, a chaste version. We're speaking as the bride of Christ, so Second John could be written to us. Israel is called is God's bride. Uh, yeah, God's bride. So 2 John could be written to the nation of Israel, which primarily it is for Jews in the tribulation. But we can find impact, we can find, according to Paul, we can find things in here that re relate to the church. Now, in 2 John 13, I had many things to write. Uh, that's, that's 3 John, excuse me. 2 John 13, the children of thy elect sister. Well, you say, well, there's one person again. But it is singular, but being born again, it's in the body of Christ. Listen, when it comes to a born again Christian, you're not, you are not going to stand out in eternity as, look at me. Only Jesus Christ is going to stand out. Only Jesus Christ is going to stand out with the wounds in his hands and his feet and in the side still. Born again Christians in, in eternity in New Jerusalem are going to look just like Jesus Christ, minus the marks. I hate to show you this revelation, but the fact is the scriptures say that you women will be men one day. Anywhere between 30 and 33 years old, depending on when Christ began his ministry or when he ended his ministry. You say, well, I'm going to know mama in heaven. I'm going to know my children in heaven. I'm going to know my husband. No, you, no I don't know, because we're all, we are all going to look like Jesus Christ in a glorified body. That's where I'm going to stop right there. Now, again, Matthew 24, 21. Matthew twenty four twenty one. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world. To this time, no, not ever shall be. And except those days be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. In verse 24, for there shall rise false Christ, false prophets, and full. Oh, let me. That could, I think I skipped the page. I think I read over two pages. For there shall be. I did. I skipped an extra page. For there shall be false Christ, false prophets, and they shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now, who's that? That's Jews in the tribulation period. 
Those are Jews who are going through Jacob's trouble. Now, number two, Israel as a nation. And number three, Christians in the body are a corporate. Number two, Israel is a nation. And number three, the church is the entire body of Christ, the church. We're going to be one body. We're going to be as one one day, unity. And the church has gone so far today from that teaching because you go into churches today, you've got unsaved Christian, uh, unsaved people in the church. I didn't mean to say Christian. You've got people in your, in your local church today that are saved and lost. That's not the body of Christ. Listen, when the rapture happens, only those that are saved, only those that are born again, are going to be glorified to, get to Christ and through the judgment seat of Christ and to be part of the bride of Christ to inherit New Jerusalem. No lost men will go up in the rapture. Number four, the lady. And number five, the sister that we read about in Second John. They are to a person. But they are in the body of Christ, corporate. Now, John is writing sometime around 90 AD. After the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Christ died somewhere around 30 AD, 33 AD. According to Usher's dates, and that's the dates that are found in the Schofield Bible. You may be right, you may be wrong, I'm not going to challenge it. But going by his dates... In the Schofield King James 1611 Bible, in Acts chapter 9, when Paul gets saved, it's 34 35 AD. Now, John's writing around 90 AD. Paul is saved 34 to 35 AD. At the first council of, Jer of Jerusalem in Acts 15, Between Acts 9 and Acts 15, Acts 15 is dated at 46 A.D. And like I said, it could be off. It could be plus or minus. That would be anywhere between 10 to 11 years after Paul got saved. And we find, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved without law and works. In Acts 16. Remember Paul and Silas are in jail. They're singing praises to God. And the earthquake comes. And the miracle of the prisoners still sitting in jail with the gates open. And the prisoner, and I mean the guard comes in. And he's about to kill himself. And he says, what must I do to be saved? That's Acts chapter 16. And that's written about 53 AD. So that's another six, seven years after the Council of Jerusalem. 17, 18 years after Paul is saved. 17, 18 years later, Paul is preaching, you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. No works. John knows the revelation and teachings of Paul the Apostle. Again, Acts 16 was 53 AD. That's 47 years prior to second John so when John writes his epistle second John to the elect lady and her children he knows what Paul is preaching he knows what Paul has been taught he knows the mysteries that Paul has spoken about he knows about the Jew and Gentile be one body he knows that it's not by works it's not by the law it's not by commandment but it's by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ it is faith and mouth confession with your heart believing on the Lord Jesus Christ Romans chapter 10 John knows the revelation. John is not writing in the flavor of Jewishness as you find in Acts 2.38. Repent and be baptized. How some heretics say it. Repent and be baptized. Ba baptized, not baptized. Only a Billy Gale butts. So we've come a long way from Acts 2.38 to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, Acts 16. Now get this. 
Peter has used both of his keys. You know where Jesus said, I give you the keys? And some church out there teaches, you know, Peter sits at the pearly gates at his little desk there, and he has the keys for you to go. That's a bunch of hogwash. That's a bunch of junk. That's a bunch of people who can't even pay their own bills in the Vatican, okay? This is a bunch of people you won't even trust your own little boys with. And if you do, you're sorry. Peter is giving keys, two of them, for two sets of people. He's already used it on the Jews, Acts chapter 10. I mean, Acts chapter 2, excuse me. When he preached his message. And a little bit after that, he, he went into the Jerusalem and he preaches there to the Jews. He's also used it on the Gentiles. In Acts chapter 10, Cornelius. And he didn't go up to Cornelius and repent and be baptized. You got to get this. You say, what are you, what are you doing? I'm trying to show you what John knows now. When he writes this book, when he writes this epistle, I'm trying to show you he, he knows about the Jew and Gentile. He knows about salvation through grace. He knows about the church. He knows Israel is being set aside as a nation, as a corporate body. And if he's writing around 70 A.D., I mean 90 A.D., 70 A.D., Jerusalem was destroyed by Titus. I just, just realized that. John is writing in line with Pauline doctrine. Now, I know some people out there, oh, you go Paul onlyism. Go shut up. <laughs> okay? Just go shut up. Because Paul writes to the church. Paul is an apostle to the Gentiles. Okay? You believe what you want, God in the Bible is right. Simple as that. Gentiles are being saved. And yes, 2 John may be used in the church age for it is written in the present form in the church age of 90 AD. Even Peter knows Paul's works and he knows it's, it's hard to understand. Look at 2 Peter 3.15. 2 Peter 3.15. And Peter just comes right out and says, 2 Peter 3.15. You want a John 3.16? Read 2 Peter 3.16. 3.15. An account that the long sufferings of our Lord is salvation. God hasn't called us home because there's two people that need to be saved. Even as our beloved brother Paul, our beloved, he loves Paul, brother, they're saved, they're together, we're a family. Also, according to the wisdom given unto him, has written unto you. So Peter says that Paul has been given wisdom. He's a Christian. As also in all his epistles... Speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. What is that guy talking about? The Pope that you claim, who is the first Pope, the first Peter, had not, could not even understand what Paul was saying. <laughs> that dumb Pope today doesn't even know what Paul is saying. Because if he did, he stepped down, give authority to Jesus Christ, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. But since he doesn't know what Paul is talking about, he goes about his own ways and sticks to the Old Testament. Peter says that Paul has been given wisdom. Paul is a Christian. Paul has said some things to even Peter like, Ooh, wow, what is that? And what would that be? The mysteries. And he says, some things that are hard to understand, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest. Listen, I've, I've been rebuked for my stand going to, and, uh, and listen, I believe all 66 books. But when it comes to the church, I, you better go to the Pauline epistles. And I've been rebuked for that. 
Well, I'll wait for the day the Lord Jesus Christ rebukes you for rebuking me. Because Paul writes to churches. Peter, James, and them are still Jewish flavor. Written more of like Hebrews written to the Jews are going to be in the tribulation period. And in the millennium. As they do also in the other scriptures. Unto their own destruction. They're saying listen if you don't know what, what God says. You're not going to understand what Paul says. But John. Knows. And has heard Paul. And understand, well, maybe, maybe I, I can't, can't say understand, but John knows what, what revelation has been given to Paul by the Lord Jesus Christ. They all know that Jesus Christ showed himself unto Paul on the road of Damascus. They know it. When John uses the elect lady, he knows the gospel that Paul has been preaching. And what is that? Let's go. Romans 2.16. We're going to look at, like I said, I'm in no rush for time. I don't feel the Holy Spirit saying, run through this thing like a bulldozer. This is written for uh, uh, newborn babes, and this is written for, for the ones that are on me to remember what the milk was. Romans 2, 16. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. And that's Paul writing to the Rome. You know, those idiots over there that think they've got the powers that be. You are going to be judged by Jesus Christ by what Paul said what you need to do. What does that mean? That means Peter is not going to be at the pearly gates checking your name and checking your works. Peter is not Santa Claus, and Santa Claus is not Santa Claus. He's Satan Claus. You will be judged on how you get to heaven and hell this day by what Paul has written. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. We are now looking at the gospel. The gospel has not been revealed to anybody but to Paul. And we're going to look at those scriptures. If you do not believe what Paul said as far as the gospel and what to do today, the rapture has not happened. The Lord Jesus Christ has died, has been buried, and rose from the grave. Between that point and the rapture, if you have not believed what Paul has told you to do, you will die and go to hell and burn for eternity. I'm not saying that with a smile. I'm not saying that to chucker. And I'm not saying that to be humorous. It's a serious thing. Read Romans 10. If you don't do what Paul tells you to do, you will burn for eternity. We're not done. Next place, 1 Corinthians. No, wait a minute. No, we got more here. 15-16. Uh, Romans 15-16. Romans 15, 16. Paul speaking. That I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. Doing what? Ministering the gospel of God. That the offerings up of the Gentiles might be acceptable. Being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Being acceptable. What's that mean? You better do what God tells you to do and how to do it and not put your own merit into it. To be acceptable is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and to be saved, not anything else. Nothing else. Anything else. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6. Next one, 1519. Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, so that from Jerusalem and round about Icarium, I have fully preached 
the gospel of Christ. So not only was Paul revealed to the gospel, he preached this gospel. Now in a minute, we're going to get to what that gospel is. And what it's not. And it will divide your church and your belief from what is right and what is wrong. What is wicked and what is holiness. You know, as we talk about gospel, you know there's a gospel in the tribulation period? And we're not going to look at that. And it's not the gospel of Paul. And it's not men. No angel, Paul says, can preach the gospel. When Cornelius saw the angel, the, Cornelius, uh, the angel told Cornelius, go get a man. The, the, uh, the angel of the Lord said to Philip, go to this guy in the desert because I can't go tell him the gospel. No angel, if you see him on your peanut butter toast, if you see him in a tree, if you see him on someone's hiney, can reveal to you the gospel because the angels can never know what it is to be redeemed. He say, can God use an angel? Oh, yes, he can. But if that angel does not point you to a Bible-believing King James man for salvation, that angel is a an heretic. And you look at your religions. You look at the Mormons over there. They've got an angel. That did not point to Jesus Christ of the Bible. Islam has an angel that does not point to Jesus Christ of the Bible. The Catholics have plenty of thousand million angels showing up everywhere in your breakfast cereal and are not showing you the Jesus Christ of the Bible. Verse 25. You say you got to preach like that? Yes, I do. But now I go unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. So he's going to preach to the Jews. He's going to tell the Jews about the gospel. He's going to Jerusalem. And guess who was at Jerusalem? The apostles. Who was one of the apostles? John. So wouldn't you think they would have a powwow, talk together, sit down, and, you know... Remember what it was like to be with Jesus and all the miracles he'd done before them. And Paul just sitting back and just listening to the wonderful stories. Listen to the apostles talk about their life of Jesus Christ and all that. And then he'd get up and say, this is what the Lord revealed to me. And the Holy Spirit signified that Paul is a mind. All right. 1 Corinthians one seventeen now. 1 Corinthians one seventeen. Now we'll get this one. 1 Corinthians 1.17, read with me. For Christ sent me not to baptize. So what do you do when somebody tells you you need to be you need to be baptized to be saved? Didn't we just read that Paul took the gospel and ministered to it? Minister to people, went to the Gentiles, he's going to Jerusalem, he's going to minister to God. Didn't we just read that in Romans? Well, he just said in Corinthians that I am not sent to baptize. Well, baptism must not be the gospel. Water baptism could not save you. Those people who were on the Titanic, who were not born again, who were not washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, were immersed in the icy cold Atlantic Ocean, are now in the depths of hell, burning. And being baptized in the Atlantic Ocean did nothing for them. Unless they are washed by the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, unless they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, save nothing else. The ocean couldn't save them. But to preach the gospel. So baptism and gospel are not the same thing. You got that? 
not with wisdom of words. Well, in the Hebrew and the Greek, press one for English, will you? Transliterated. 1828 Webster's Dictionary, please. Well, I believe. Well, shut up. Let's see what God says. Now, with enticing, with wisdom of words, least the, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Listen, he just said, listen, you get up there and preach baptism. That's not it. He get up there with great swelling words. It has none effect. Do you know a preacher that goes to the Hebrew and Greek? Do you know a preacher that goes transliterated? Do you know a preacher that gets in there with great swelling words? Paul said it has no effect. So what do you say? Well, I was saved out of that church. Paul said it has no effect. And the gospel is mentioned in that verse. You tell me what Paul is saying. The gospel is not great swelling words. The gospel is not baptism. And it is said we are to preach the gospel. Next, 9.17, First Corinthians 9.17. First Corinthians 9.17, for if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. You are to preach the gospel because you want to. Not because your mama put you in ministry. Not because your preacher put you in the ministry. Not because your, your father was a preacher and your grandfather was a preacher and your great great uncle uh, was a missionary and all that. You are to preach the gospel because you want to preach the gospel. And the Bible says, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Mark chapter 16. You are to do it because you want to, and you are to do it because God told you to do it. If you get up there and somebody makes you do it, somebody pushes you to do it, somebody, uh, whatever. There are no rewards if you do it by force. I tell you what, people, everybody come out Saturday, go knocking on doors, and we'll have a free chicken dinner with all the fixings if you come knocking on the door. And that's what has got to get you to go take the gospel to someone's door. It's not accounted to you because you took your reward by having fried chicken or whatever it is. How about that? you got to be willingly and wanting. Listen. One of the things I, I do before I go preach, and I pray days before it happens, that the flesh is not involved but only the Holy Spirit. I don't want to do it in the flesh. I don't want to do it because I want to see people look at me. I want people to acknowledge me. I don't want that to happen. My flesh sometimes will say that. I will want to do it because the Lord told me to do it, and I want to pleasingly do it for the Lord and get a reward. You gotta get the flesh out of it. That's what Paul's saying. And no one else can make you do it. You gotta make yourself do it. And why do I say make yourself? Because sometimes your flesh won't do it. Sometimes when I'm about to when I'm about to you know, I'm on the streets, I'm about to open up my big mouth, and, the, and my flesh says, Don't you dare do that. And Holy Spirit's like, do it. My flesh says, Don't do it. The Holy Spirit says, You better do it. My flesh says, Don't do it. But oh, when I listen to the Holy Spirit, then what comes out of that mouth, and then when people show up to hear the word, what amazingness. But if I do it just because so someone can see me or someone can acknowledge me, then that's, God doesn't enjoy that. 15 verse 1. 1 Corinthians 15 1. Now let's get it down in a nutshell. 15 1. Ready? 
Moreover, brethren, oh, he's speaking to Christians. I declare unto you the gospel, which I preach unto you. Paul is preaching the gospel to Christians. He had preached it to them. He preached it to them before they became Christians. To receive the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Which also ye have received. So the gospel can be received. Have you received Jesus Christ as your Savior? Or have you been dipped? Have you been sprinkled? Have you been washed? Have you been working? That's not the way. Have you received the gospel? And wherein ye stand. I stand in the gospel that Paul preached. We're going to look at it. By which also ye are saved. Salvation comes by this gospel. If you don't have this gospel. And we already saw it's not baptism. If you don't have this gospel, if you have not received this gospel, you are not saved. I don't care. I don't care what your preacher said. I don't care what your mama said. I don't care what your next door neighbor said. If you have not believed on the, on the gospel that we're going to read and study about, you are not saved. You will burn in hell. By which also you have heard, which you are saved, if ye keep in memory what I have preached unto, unto you, unless ye have believed in vain, ye believe something other than the gospel. There are people out there who are, who think they're saved and they're not saved. But Jesus didn't wait. Depart from me, I never knew you. But Jesus, depart from me, I never knew you. Too many people are going to hear that. Too many churchgoers are going to be facing at the great white throne judgment, thinking they're going to heaven, and they're not. They were never saved, and they never got saved by God's way. All right. Verse 3. 15-3. For I, Paul, have delivered unto you first of all. Here's what delivery. Here's the message. That which I also received, this was given to Paul. How that Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures. The gospel number one is Christ died for your sins according to the word of God. I even call the question if you don't have the proper word of God, if you have something other than the King James. Because you know what they do with the blood of Christ that washes you? If no one sat down with a Bible or a gospel track and quoted any scripture to you, and you said this prayer without the scriptures. You need to get down on your knees and see if you're very, very saved. Because it says according to the scriptures. And the scriptures say that Christ died for your sins. If you are trusting in anything but Calvary. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day, according to scriptures. There are religious people out there who claim to be God, and you can find their bones. You cannot find a bone of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is, seated, he is seated on the right hand of God today, right now. He is alive. He is not dead. The angel said... He is risen. He told Mary, He is not here. He is risen. 
You can go to the cemeteries, you can go to the buildings, you can go to places where all these other guys are, and the people say, there he is! There's his bones! That's not a god! According to the word of God. 2 Corinthians 11.4 2 Corinthians 11.4 You better make sure you have the right salvation. For if he that cometh preach another Jesus, oh, there are other Jesuses out there, whom you have not preached, or if you have received another spirit that is not the Holy Spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel. Oh, there's other gospels out there which you have not accepted. You might well bear with him. And get down 2 Corinthians 11, 4. And get down 1 Corinthians 13, I mean 15, 1 through 4. Get that down and know it. Because that's where salvation lies. And there is a salvation out there that lies. That has another Jesus. That has another gospel. That has another spirit. You need to check out Galatians 1.8. 1 1.11. And 2.7. On how Paul got this gospel. How Paul got the revelation from Jesus Christ. How Paul did not go to a university, but he learned of the gospel from God himself. He didn't get a certificate. He didn't get a diploma. He got the gospel. Did I hear an amen? You go to universities and cemeteries. I mean seminaries today. Cemeteries, I call them. You don't get the gospel. But you get a piece of paper. Hanging on the wall just in the bathroom just in case you run out of the other paper. Because that's how good it is. Or they water down the gospel. Having made known what Jesus Christ has revealed to Paul, what Paul is preaching and his doctrine, which John knows, the elect lady in first John uh, second John 1 is no other than a saved woman and we will encounter her one day in glory she's elect for she took Jesus Christ as her Savior as her salvation and as the fact is that her choosing Jesus Christ God has elected her based upon her free will choice as his son, as her salvation. God did not foreordain her soul. It was her choice to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and to be saved. And we can apply Second John to us as the elect if you are a born again Christian, you are blood washed, you have chosen what God has, has prepared for us, God has, has put a means for us to be saved, you have chosen that way, and when you receive what God said and how to do, then God chooses you to be elect. We're going to stop right there. We'll get more teaching, more, we're, we're not done with this lady yet. We're not done with the election yet. It's a very important, it's a very thing that we get into detail and we teach what is right and correct and do it slowly and do it rightfully and do it whole, holy and do it through scripture. Notice I have quoted scripture. I have given you scripture. You can go look it up and if it's something what I believe or something what I said, I will tell you, you can throw it in a garbage can. This is my opinion or this is what I think. And when I say what I think or is my opinion, you don't have to believe it. But if I show you in the scriptures, 
I showed you today that baptism is not salvation. It is not the gospel. I showed you that. And when you got a guy who gets up there allocating speech and all that, it is no effect. I showed you that. What are you going to do with the truth? Sanctify them through, through truth. Thy word is truth, the Bible says. The gospel is, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection, and thou shalt be saved.